Well, great way to start the second round. I thought was going to be a pretty simple W, but then uh, Donovan Mitchell just had to go nuclear. Anyways, back for another Clippers game recap and another defeat by from the Clippers. Uh, the Jazz beat the Clippers 112 to 109. The Clippers surprisingly played probably their worst basketball, if not their worst basketball in the second half and an almost – tied it up, sending the game into overtime. But regardless, uh, what are my thoughts on this game? First things first, I'm not going to overreact to this game. Yes, this loss absolutely sucks. And it's just a depressing, frustrating loss. I totally get that. I'm still frustrated because I'm actually, I'm making this right after the game ended. Right now, I'm not going to, I have a little concern but not too big. Now, I'm going to have a huge concern if we lose game two, heading back to Staples, down 0-2, because I believe that unlike Dallas, I don't think you can go down 0-2 to this, this Utah Jazz squad. Anyways, um, what would be a pretty good storyline in this game? Let me just say this. It was a tale of two halves. A tale of two halves. In the first half, the Clippers were just on fire, getting whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, and they had a commanding lead. And the Jazz, they were missing damn near every shot and barely could stay in the game, but they stayed in the game as best they could. Then the second half happens, and everything that was happening in the first half for both teams completely flipped. Plus the fact that uh, Utah's star, superstar player in Donovan Mitchell showed up. Now, Kawhi, I thought he was okay. Definitely wasn't his best stuff tonight, but I thought he was okay. Paul George, on the other hand, we'll get to him in a second. But uh, everything flipped, and when the superstar player is hitting shots and then motivating his team, his teammates around him. The other Utah Jazz just met, the other Jazz players just found their shot. And then by then, it's just the Clippers couldn't hold on to the run. And with some questionable rotations and shit like that, you know, the Clippers ended up losing. Now the Clippers almost tied the game at the end. My whole thought on the sequence at the end was just, what are we doing? I don't know why we call a timeout. Maybe they didn't call a timeout because of what happened at the end of the Dallas game in game five, which which honestly I can understand um, when it was, they just, yeah, I had it where Kawhi chucked up a three, but I don't know why Rondo didn't give it to Kawhi or Paula George and they dribbled up the court. Um, yeah, um, listen, I'm going to talk about some things. Um, again, very questionable performances. But um, again, I'm not going to get too alarmed, but there is going to be some uh, things I'm going to bring out that need to be better. First things first, Ty Lue with the rotations. Um, I don't know what the, the – I thought Ty Lue's rotations in the first half were – Music to my ears, spot on, A-plus material. And then in the second half, everything he did in the first half, he went away from. For some reason, we did not play Terrence Mann, Bev, at least for defensive purposes, on Donovan Mitchell because he's a fairly good defender on Donovan Mitchell. And for some reason, we didn't go back to Cousins. What are we doing? In the first half, you essentially had a full bench, like, just come out and play. And in the second half, you shorten the bench. What are we doing, Ty Lue? What are we doing? Because now it's getting to the point where it's like, okay, Bev wasn't the best, but maybe he can do something defensively and maybe throw off Donovan Mitchell, 
because Donovan Mitchell has stated that Patrick Beverly sometimes can give him some fits and problems. At least give Patrick Beverly some run to see if he can somewhat slow down Donovan Mitchell when he was going damn near nuclear in the second half. Didn't get no Bev. Didn't get no man to see if man could take on the challenge and maybe slowing down um, Mitchell. Cousins, he looked really damn good in this game. Honestly, Cousins and Zoo look good in this, look both good in this game. Cousins, why didn't he get no more minutes? He just got those four minutes after he picked up his third foul and then was gone. I believe Ty Lu needs to have a full bench rotation, like all hands on deck, because this is the thing. I, I, I just feel like we need to have a whole hands on deck type of thing. So that means using guys and not figuring out this rotation and stuff like that. <coughs> so, yeah. And then another reason why I said why maybe give Bev and T-Man some run is because, folks, ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Rajon Rondo, after, like, the first couple of playoff games this season, has looked atrocious. He had another atrocious performance. I'm not going to poo-poo you. I'm not going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He looked bad. And I'm like, if Rondo's looking bad, why not go to Man or Beverly and see what they can give you? Preferably Man. But no. We're just going to stick with Rondo. Anyways, um, Nicholas Batum, um, he only had six points tonight, hit two of his three-point shots. Again, I thought he was all right, could have played better. Kawhi Leonard, um, in 36 minutes, had 23 points, 9-19 from the field, only hit one of his three-point shots, had seven rebounds and three assists. Like I said earlier in, in this video, I thought Kawhi Leonard had an okay game. Um, definitely... Not a good game, but I thought he had an okay game. Something where it's like, okay, it's passable. At least he's giving me, trying to give me something and trying to get the Clippers to win. But you can clearly see that Kawhi Leonard was getting a little bit exhausted, a little bit tired down, obviously, from the entire series with the damn, um, with, with the Dallas Mavericks and stuff like that, um, playing damn near 40-plus minutes. He only played 36 minutes in this game. But you can clearly see he was fatigued. I expect him to be better in game two. Um, Royce O'Neal did give him some problems, but if I'm going to be honest, Royce O'Neal was honestly, to me, fouling the shit out of Kawhi. Like, there was, like, more fouls I could count. There, there, there's more fouls than I could count when it came to Kawhi Leonard against Royce O'Neal, um, which the refs were, in the first half, were honestly atrocious. They were bad, but it, this isn't on the refs. Um, Marcus Morris Sr., he had an off night, 4-14. Had the complete opposite of the game seven game. Definitely needs to play better. Only at nine points. Needs to play better. Reggie Jackson. I think it's time to go back to sitting Reggie again, guys. I'm done with Reggie. Nine points, three or six from the field, and then he fouled out. Yeah, please go back to sitting him. We don't need him. He did his job. Good. Um, I'm going to say Paul George for last. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins in four minutes played. Again, asking the question to Ty Lue, why did DeMarcus Cousins not get any more minutes? Because he looked good. He made his first impact play by essentially taking the ball out of Gobert's hand and going in for an and one layup. He looked really damn good in this game. Why wasn't he not playing anymore? No idea. I don't know if it was because Ty was scared of him picking up another foul, but you had various guys in foul trouble anyways to begin with. So... The fact that we didn't see DeMarcus Cousins get some run in the second half, I have no clue there. Um, Zubak in 20 minutes. I honestly thought this was one of his better games. I thought Zoo was pretty solid um, in this game. Um, again, nothing where you can play him substantial minutes, but if Zoo was going to give me what he get, got gave me tonight, I thought he was pretty solid. I thought he guarded Gobert pretty, pretty good tonight offensively i thought he was solid he had 11 points 
Um, he had six rebounds and three assists. I thought I liked the hustle. There was one hustle where he hustled for a rebound. I liked what Zubak gave me in this game. Zubak was honestly one of my least problems. I thought he played solid enough. Honestly, I would have been fine if the Clippers had put him in late in the game because I felt like we needed a rim protector up in there for rebound purposes because the Jazz just killed us on the board on the board's late game, especially in the second half. Rondo, only five points, one of three from the field. We hit one of his three-point three um, shots. Five rebounds, six assists. Rondo was, eh, again, I rather would have gone Beverly or Mann in the second half over Rondo, but listen, it's getting to the point where Rondo, this is like the fourth or fifth straight game Rondo has not looked good. We're not getting that playoff Rondo. He has not looked good at all. So that's one thing. Beverly, um, he only had six minutes of the game. He didn't really do much of anything. Um, so I can't really gauge it. He didn't look the best to start off, but maybe if he gets more playing time, maybe he'll settle in, but we'll see. I thought he could have played some more minutes to at least try to slow down to see if we can give him a look, see if we can slow down Mitchell and that when he was going nuclear. I just don't know why. Um, Terrence Mann, eight minutes. Only two points. Don't know why he didn't have any more minutes. I've already been through this Terrence Mann discussion. When he gets in, good things tend to happen. Luke Kennard, which was a surprising player today. I thought he played good. And again, is a pretty valuable piece if he's playing really well offensively in this series. He had 18 points. Um, he was the third leading scorer on the Clippers. Um, 18.79 from the field hit four three-pointers, and had two rebounds. I thought Luke Kennard was great in this game. Now, obviously, you can see that the Jazz were clearly targeting him on the defensive end, but I thought Luke Kennard did a fairly decent job holding on his own, holding on on the defensive end. Um, so I won't mind if Kennard's playing. Um, like I said, the only thing is, if Kennard's hitting shots, Good. I'm fine with that. And you can keep him in despite the defensive deficiencies and the fact that they're clearly targeting him. But I was just mind blown with the game Luke Kennard gave me tonight. I'm very much impressed. And if this is a sign for Luke Kennard getting more minutes and hitting these shots and getting and, and hitting shots and being an offensive force where he's giving us maybe 10 or more points, you have to play him. You have to play him. I like the fact that Tyloo didn't pull him late in the game. Um, he stuck, he, he kept in there. He, he kept him in there because he was one of the more prolific offensive, you know, scores we had on the court tonight. Um, so yeah. Um, now let's get to the, actually, now let me run down the jazz stats and then we'll get into my closing thoughts, which is obviously Paul George. Now, really, when I look through the jazz's stats, they didn't really do anything. O'Neal, eight points. Bogdanovich, 18 points. Although he played a better second half, he was still 6 of 14 from the field. Gobert had 10 points, nothing to worry about. Eagles, eight points, 3 of 12 from the field. Clarkson had 18 off the bench, 6 of 18. Okay, fine. You'll live with that. Niang, only three points. Favors, two points. Donovan Mitchell, which I thought was the game changer of this game, is he went nuclear. He was clearly the best player on the court tonight. Um... In that third quarter, he just went, the first shot he made just was the start of just shots he went in a row. And he went on a 10-2 to two run to start the third quarter off. And by then, it's just smooth sailing. And it's like, fudge, I thought we were done guarding Luka. And I'm like, Donovan Mitchell isn't going to be much problem. Well, if Donovan Mitchell is going to give these stretches where he just goes nuclear out of the ass, then we're going to have a problem. So the Clippers are clearly going to have to come up with a defensive game plan to slow this dude down and make sure he's not getting points like this. He had 45 points, 16 of 30 from the field, hit six of his 15 three-point shots, although some of those he chucked up and some surprisingly they went in. Two of them got bounced off the damn rim. Um, he had five uh, assists and three rebounds. Um, listen, Donovan Mitchell showed up, and his 45 points was the difference. You take away 40. Half of those 45 points, we might be talking about a different game, ladies and gentlemen. We might be talking about a di di different game. So clearly the Clippers have to do a better job 
at uh, guarding him and giving him different looks. We'll see. Um, and that was the one thing. Um, tail two halves. Listen, the Jazz, they made their shots in the second half. Clippers just didn't. Then they played atrocious. Now, let's end off this uh, game recap talking about a guy we need to show up. A guy we need to show up. A guy who we needed to do what Donovan Mitchell was doing on the other end, whether it was Kawhi Leonard or Paul George. Again, like I said, Kawhi Leonard, I thought it was he was okay. Definitely could play better. Paul George, on the other hand, 20 points, 4 of 17 from the field, 3 of 8 from 3, 10 rebounds, and 2 assists. I think this makes it the fourth straight game. Paul George has had a pretty lackluster game. I said in game seven, my game seven recap, that Paul George barely scraped to get around 20 points. You could say the same. You could say the same case here. What the fuck was that performance? Paul George literally reverted back into what people like to call him. Pandemic P, playoff P, Yada, yada, yada. Paul George played like a man who would play in their own house of horrors and is afraid to get over that. You had the jazz crowd chanting overrated. Paul George, ladies and gentlemen, Clipper fans, was horrendous. This guy could not buy a basket to save his life. He needs to play better going forward in this series, otherwise the Clippers stand no chance. Although Kawhi Leonard, he can play better too. I've always said Kawhi Leonard, the Clippers go as far as Kawhi Leonard takes him. But also too, the Clippers can go as far as Paul George takes him. Kawhi Leonard didn't have the best of nights. Paul George needs to pick up that slack and be like, I got you. And he didn't show up. There was one point, he was like one for 11 in this game, in the second half. And I'm like, This dude is letting us down. One, that's why I've not bought me a Clippers Paul George jersey yet. Until the Clippers win us, I guess you could say the finals, that's when I'm wearing getting a Paul George jersey. But Paul George needs to play better, man. He had way too many open looks um, from three that he just bricked. He needs to make those shots. Paul George needs and has to play better. And when I say needs and has, that's in caps. He has to play better. What Donovan Mitchell did is what Cole, is what Paul George needed to do. Hopefully Paul George shows up in game two and plays a much better game in his house of horrors and shuts up the crowd. Because if a crowd's calling you overrated, that's when you need to come out in game two and be like, I need to freaking hit my shots. I need to be dominant. I need to shut these guys up. So I'm not going to expect much from Paul George now, but uh, I need a big game, and I need a good, efficient game. This game, he was atrocious. He was not efficient. The last three games in the Dallas series, he was not efficient. He's only, in my opinion, I thought the last three Dallas games were okay games by him, but could be better. The first four games of Paul George, um, excuse me, in the Dallas series, I thought he played great. Here, he was awful. Awful. It's definitely not a good start. Now, you can say the Clippers clearly were the fatigue caught up with them. Regardless, they still had a lead going to the second half, and they should have won this game. And it sucks, too, because they could have stole this game because Mike Conley, Clipper killer Mike Conley, had to sit out because of his hamstring. Now, I don't know if he's going to play in game two, but we'll see. Hopefully, now, listen, the Clippers have to win game two. That's, that's just end of story. Clippers have to win game two. They have to win game two. If they don't win game two, I'm not exactly going to be confident in them going back to Los Angeles um, I do. I wish I, I wish, Ga- I wish Newsom freaking, uh, um, freaking 
made it to where, guess what? Screw the freaking, you know, full capacity restrictions. Just make the full capacity the first game, you know, in game three. Instead of having those cardboard cutouts and then 7,000 fans and staples. Clearly, those that full packed house um, in Utah clearly helped. Can, you, can, can somebody talk to Newsom and tell him, hey, let's uh, just have a full capacity Staples Center, please, and thank you, forget it. Forget the June 15th restrictions in California. Just tell everybody you can come to the game full capacity because clearly in, we're the only team in the NBA that only has 7,000 fans in their arena. Newsom, please give us a full capacity stadium soon or damn near half full capacity. But listen, the Clippers are going to play a better game in the second half, uh, in, in game two, where if you have a good first half, well, you got to have a good second half too and close up the Jazz. I believe if the Clippers have a good second half, we win this game pretty, I wouldn't say easily, but convincingly. And we still a game from Utah, where game two, who knows if we win or lose. But um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, and maybe they may give Mike Conley some rest since they win game one, game one. Who knows? But we'll see. Um, definitely if, when Mike Conley plays, it's going to be a different Jazz team. But we could have stole a game against Utah tonight, and we failed to do that because we didn't show up in the second half. Clippers got to come out, play much better um, in the second half. Players like Marcus Morris and Paul George – and a little bit of Kawhi needs to play much better. Ty Lu, he needs to play some guys some more minutes when he's not, when they're not getting those minutes played. But listen, right now, I'm a little concerned, but it's not a big deal right now. If they lose game two, then let then I'll talk saying this is a big deal now. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, that's all I gotta say for this video. The Clippers fall to the Utah Jazz 112 to 109. Again, I still got Clippers in six. Um, so, yeah, but we clearly saw in the first half that when the Jazz are off, they're off. But when they can get on, they're on, and they're deadly. And the thing is, the Clippers got to match the same run and hit their shots when they're going on those runs to do that. Also, the defense could be a little bit better. And there's a few times we left some wide-open three-point shooters wide open, and they killed us. Um, there was clearly also some lapses on defense where you had some guys not picking up somebody – and when you would think, oh, a switch happens, both guys go with the roller and they don't know what they're doing. Hopefully Ty Lue makes the necessary adjustments for game two, um, has better rotations, and then we can pull out and get a W in game two headed back to Los Angeles. Anyways, that's all I got to say for this Clippers game recap. If you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this game. Um, what can the Clippers do better to win a game, win game two? as well as hit the subscribe button if you want to get more Clippers game recaps. Hopefully this we can win game two. Other than that, I'm a guy for – hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Or not everyone checking out this video. Until then, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you guys Thursday for game two Clippers game recap. Anyways, peace.